All right. Sarah, Sarah DT rhymes with PT stuck in my head. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for taking the time. Glad we could get together here in New York city. How Mm -hmm. are you doing? Good. It was a fun commute over seeing Mm. everyone like rushing to work at 10 a.m. I'm not used to this like Hudson Yards hustle bustle. The the hustle bustle is is real. I was here yesterday and tried to go to Sweet Greens. I was like, Mm. well, there's a two hour line. Like that's never going to happen. But it's worth it. Yeah, sweet green is, is. Well, always I went to worth another it. location, the one by the Nomad. Yeah, I love last. sweet green. It was a little bit. I shorter. could probably talk about sweet green for an hour. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can get to sweet greens <laughs> and and other tips within the city. But I uh, just wanted to take a a quick second to kind of go back into your career. I mean, it's been interesting to watch kind of your career evolve and the different facets in which you've been able to tap into. The way you've built your brand, I think it's quite remarkable, especially because to me, you know, I think you're you're a kid still. You know, you're very, very young. I feel uh, like I'm getting old. <laughs> you're not at all. Trust me. <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't even think I'm getting old. So you got a long <laughs> runway to go. Some some would beg to differ, but <laughs> yeah. Can you can you tell us a little bit about your story and you know how you came to be to where to where you Definitely. are today? Yeah, born and raised in Texas. So I'm still in the Tejas original. Tejas, um, but I love New York. So I've been here for a little over three years and I lived in Nashville for a stint in between there. But in Texas, it's so funny because I actually have some Texas friends in town this week. So it's been this really weird like reckoning with my past. Yeah. And everyone always asks like, how, how did you learn this? How did you? Um, and I just had a really creative group of friends growing up in Texas and um it's nothing like the coast in terms of uh, people having a ton of dreams. Um, yeah. But I was in this unique, uh, unique place where I mean, I was part of a mega church basically, and everyone. It's like a concert every weekend, so I was in the band and I was doing all this crazy stuff to where like playing guitar, but then they need a video. Okay, well, how do you do premiere? What is premiere? And then I took an A for V class in high school, so I was just very curious in high school, and I would say. All of that and and then uh, doing electrical engineering in college and then uh, doing kind of like side hu- hustle hold on, hold on. Electrical production. engineering? Yeah, I know. Okay, I so you're of, wicked smart as well. So I mean, let me just gl- gloss I, over I didn't that. I did finish electrical okay. engineering. It's, it's okay. <laughs> so I did the that. Intent was, you, you even thought about going into it. So Yeah, I mean, I did it for three years. And wow, so. She's a rocket I, scientist. <laughs> um, she, <laughs> so I did double E for two years and then I switched to computer science for one year. And I I will tell you one thing, if you have no idea what you want to do in life, throw yourself into something responsible. And if you hate it, you will find what you love. Um, (laughs) Because three years of just like doing the responsible thing. Okay, yes, I'm creative, but hey, I need to make money. I need to get a, you know, a six figure salary engineering. I was good at math science in high school. The safe route. The safe route, right? Um, But I kept just making videos on the side and I just, I was really in love with it. And I took these random production jobs in Nashville and it really was a a ton of like boring corporate gigs, but I would get a new camera and I would box on on camera and, you know, do, do like YouTube videos on the side. But do you think like being bored out of your mind with what you were doing, you know, the electrical engineer route or computer science kind of forces, forces you to, it's like, well, this is going to be it unless I... I'm creative and come up with something yeah, and else. And the thing that people always miss in those narratives is I wasn't just like sitting on my couch, staring at the ceiling, like waiting for something to happen. Uh, I was beyond just doing electrical engineering. I was um, apprenticing at a local like electronic shop because I thought I was into guitar. So I thought I was going to build pedals and amps for the rest of my life. And it wasn't until I got a job. Because everyone does that. Because everyone wants to do that, (laughs) right, guys? Yeah, no. Um, And so I really thought that that's what I want to do until I got a job in it. So I think the school and the job combo, you could probably just go apprentice and just skip the college debt, right? Um, it, It really wasn't until I was doing it that I realized, oh, this is awful. Right. Th- I'm miserable. Yeah. I'm replacing repl- electric piano keys on an electric piano and like soldering together transistors. <laughs> like this is not the life I want to live. Yeah. And so it was really the combo of like school and working. So I was like busting my butt. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, from 10 to 2 a.m., that's when I was making videos. And w- when your entire day is something you hate, but then you have the sweet five hours of something that just lights a fire underneath your butt you're like oh okay i'm gonna run with this so i dropped out 
So, well, okay. So, <laughs> so you dropped out. You dropped out, which, yeah. which I, I could see. Obviously, it's worked out okay for you. So, thank goodness, right? Yeah. And I mean, I was pretty delusional. I dropped out with only four thousand YouTube subscribers, <laughs> um, with the intention of like, I'm going to be a YouTuber. That's self confidence, right yeah, there. Oh, totally. But maybe delusional, exactly. but it's, it's self confidence. It's it's in the middle of delusion and just like uh, you know the work meeting opportunity. I was ready to not be a YouTuber until like five years down the road. You know, I had some production jobs lined up. I will do these boring corporate interviews until the day I die. If, you know, I get to be a YouTuber at yeah, age at 90. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it just happened. Four months later, I got a residency with Adobe and I made a viral video and I was a YouTuber. What was the viral video? It was a uh, parody of Casey Neistat. Okay. He only had a, a million subscribers at that time. Um, and so he, he, you know, he does some quirky stuff in his videos. Yeah. And so I kind of like made fun of it in a nice way. Cause yeah. you know, obviously okay, I, I, he was a huge inspiration. Yeah. Um, and he called that out in the, in his video the next day and was like, Oh my God, go subscribe. And what was so great is I had been posting videos since 2011. So I had five years of content for people to go and watch. And so I think that's one of those things where when opportunity meets you know, timing and everything's, uh, everything's good, but you gotta, you gotta have those like years before of having work to show yeah, for when that grind. opportunity comes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That couldn't, that wasn't going to be your first piece of content and say, exactly. this is all I have. Exactly. So yeah. did you find then people went all the way back, started consuming your five years of content yeah. you pushed out? Yeah. And, and what was so great is I, <laughs> You know, people always ask, oh, was that intentional? Like, did you know that was going to happen? Of course I didn't know I was going to gain like 100,000 subscribers in a month. You know, no <laughs> one <laughs> plans for that. Cha-ching. But I did have the intention with making that video of promoting a new series I was making. So it was entirely with the intention of getting Casey's attention. At the end, I was like, hey, guys, go go tweet Casey. Like, you know, like, let's reach out, blah, blah, blah. Like I totally wanted to mooch off his subscribers. Right. That was definitely you the had the call of that. Call exactly. To action. I had the call to action and I was just expecting a retweet and maybe like 500 subscribers. Cause I had a new series, um, this docu series I was doing coming out. So it was totally with the intention to promote that. Yeah. So it was perfect because I all of a sudden had these tens of thousands of fans that were now on my channel, but I was also the next day launching a brand new series. Um, so yeah, I was, I was just like, yes, this so is my you're moment. A brilliant marketer go, go, as go, well. Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when I was doing it, I don't know if I even knew the term marketing, but <laughs> yeah, in hindsight, I guess. Sure. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that, that's very, it's very fascinating to mm -hmm. see, but during that time, that five years in which, you know, there was some traction, just not a ton of traction. Like, did you ever just think about stopping or, you know what, maybe this isn't for me because, you know, I've been five years is a long time, especially in today's world mm -hmm. and, and with, you know, kids today and the people don't have patience to wait out five years for much of anything. I think what was good is being a YouTuber wasn't a thing in 2011 when yeah. I was starting. So it was never, even up until the, the very end of my, you know, zero to 4,000 subscriber journey. Um, I really wasn't thinking, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber and that's only what I'm going to do. Okay. I just saw opportunity with YouTube and I didn't know what it looked like. I mean, you know, it's like the Jake Pauls of the world still weren't even a thing. We didn't really, um, back in 2014, that it wasn't as much of a thing. So I think it was a good thing that being a YouTuber, having the pressure of like, look, mom, it's a job. That wasn't yeah. even a thing. So I think it was just, I was just striving for something creative, anything more creative than like putting together a circuit with transistors and resistors and capacitors. And like, I'm just like, please anything better <laughs> than this. Um, and I just knew I love telling stories. And so it, um, there, there wasn't, the pressure was, oh my gosh, I don't want to do electrical engineering. <laughs> right. Yeah. That <laughs> so was the, think, the pressure was, I don't want to do what I'm yeah, doing. So. And of course there's a lot of serendipity involved. Um, but there's also just a lot of luck involved in that. I think my timing was really good. Well, I mean, I, I always, I'm always a believer that you, you know, while yes, there's luck and most of it does come down to the right timing mm -hmm. and you can be before your time or way ahead of the market or whatever that mm -hmm. may be. You also create your own luck. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you had been constantly pushing out content. Definitely. 
you obviously were creating another mini series that you were launching. Definitely. And so yeah. a lot of serendipity, right? That's when your work meets the good timing. I guess, I guess luck would be like, I was born in the US with a Wi-Fi connection, right? right. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of serendipity involved, which, yeah, thankful for. So now, how, how has that evolved now that you've gone from 4,000 all the way up to where you are today? Yeah. Um, and what has changed with your approach around content, what mm -hmm. you're doing? Or, yeah, obviously, you've created now a real business around Definitely. this. Yeah, it, and it took a minute, right, after... Uh, after gaining an, an audience that was actually listening to me, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I have tens of thousands of people. Um, it took a solid year and a half to figure it out, to be honest. I, I never stopped creating, um, but I was doing a lot of experimentation because I, I was kind of lost in this. Okay, people are vlogging. That's a thing. Yeah. I That sounds fun. I can make fun videos and vlog, um, but daily vlogging was a thing so yeah. I straight up was like okay I can still do my creative thing and make these like docu-series but also let's just make five videos a week let's just do five daily vlogs a week Monday through Friday right worst decision of my life <laughs> <laughs> people saw a, a, like a lot of breakdowns online um and that was also when you know my first year in New York and I I had the audacity to like think I could live in Manhattan alone the first year here <laughs> and afford something. And so of course I ended up right by Penn Station. That yeah. was the only thing I could afford in this like crappy apartment. So at the same time when I was daily vlogging, I was traveling for this residency I had and I had a ton of mice in my apartment. Very nice. It, there was a lot of drama that kept the Mascot YouTube channel. Of New York City. Yeah. Um so it was this weird combination of nothing really working but I think everything led to where I am now where there's more of a structure I've, I've gone back to really what I was doing in the beginning and I love tech I love like not just unboxing things but how does this apply in the real world like let's use this camera this laptop through the lens of a filmmaker designer um, you know people how how they're really using tech and then the other side is like if I can just make one good video that's maybe more like docu you know series vibe maybe like once every three months i'm good so yeah. it's like do my you know it's like i have sponsors it's a good flow people always care about tech i love tech so it's fun and i don't have to show off my entire life so that's where i've landed now to where it's like pulled back the vlogging like pull back towards. the pressure of hey friends or a boyfriend or xyz like be entertaining for my vlog yeah that's like so not fun. Yeah, you yeah know? it's like a reality TV series. Yeah. But how do you how do you maintain you know in today's world that's the authenticity mm -hmm. you know and have that come through without definitely. kind of exposing your entire yeah, life? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, it was just stop vlogging. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it took so much pressure off of everything in my life. Um, I really like people still. Th think they know me hopefully they know me especially through my podcast that creative life I've been able to be more of myself in an hour you right. know so I think people can learn more about me through there but with YouTube and, and tech a lot of people will discover me who aren't my subscribers they'll maybe watch two of my videos a year and so I really don't feel bad that like those people who might leave a bad comment or like might not be a contributing member of my like peachy fam right. those people like don't deserve more than right. well it's also <laughs> what it's I'm kind of like them, screw you know? them. yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not if, if yeah. you don't appreciate it i know that's kind of like a negative way to answer that question but you have to learn how to navigate the internet and that comes with hate comments and the more you give them the more they can comment on and so when you put your family in it when you put your friends in it you're really opening up the people who you most care about in your life to like scrutiny right you can maybe handle it because this is your job it's not necessarily they don't fair know how to, to everyone it. Else. yeah exactly yeah. so, so yeah. That, that's interesting so so now when you look at it where do you where do you go from here like what are your aspirations because you're you're very much a very driven person mm -hmm. you you obviously take over the world world domination yes world domination <laughs> <laughs> like, like what yeah. it, where, like what do you want to do next like mm -hmm. what what's what's on your your path i mean yeah. you definitely seem like a goal goal oriented mm -hmm. individual yeah i think the the recent goal is to get kind of everything on um lock like more of a of a flow because as i've always thought of myself as very like entrepreneurial right but i'm learning 
no, I'm I'm really 90% creative still. Yeah. Like I know how to tell a story and that really is my like one attribute. Of course I can do a lot of other things you have to be as a YouTuber. Um, but I, I think I've been living in this weird um, delusion of thinking I'm more uh, like a business oriented than yeah. I actually, you know, I know how to run a business, right? But delegation is hard for me. Yeah. Like hiring people is really hard for me. Have you had to start um, hiring people now? Yes. Yeah, so I have like, I've worked with a ton of freelancers, but I just hired my first full-time employee like four months ago. Um, so that's been a journey in itself. And yeah. I, you know, it's been going well, but it's one of those things where delegation paralyzes me. Yeah. Like paralyzes me. So you struggle me. with it. Big struggle. Yeah. Is and it just so, because you don't feel that they're going to do as good a job as you? Totally. Or you know they won't? I know they it? won't because right. Right. <laughs> it's like, and that's, you know, and that's one thing like father Gary Vee, um, what he says a ton is like, you're too romantic. Like artists are too romantic. Yeah, and yeah. I understand that. And like a lot of times you, you have to be less romantic about stuff to delegate. Um, but a lot of times I don't want to be. Well, I mean, so, I, but I'm, at I'm, some point you become less scalable <laughs> exactly. you know? and the, the nuances that you see those mm -hmm as an artist yeah. being that creative you see every little thing yeah most people probably like myself i'd be like oh that's fantastic and be like exactly. no that's horrible did you see it you know, <laughs> exactly 22 seconds it was like this and yeah. the transition was off and yeah. we did that so you have to find what works for you right so that's that's what i'm working on right now like i i'm delegating out stuff first that i know i don't have any uh you know my podcast the most creative part is just talking about it i don't right. need to sit there and edit that that right. doesn't require like storytelling skills unless you do um you know unless you're on some gimlet media shit like they're so creative um <laughs> but i don't know if you can cuss on this sorry you, you can, can. bleep that out no, okay <laughs> don't worry because <laughs> i usually don't cuss either so <laughs> um, you can and so it's just the way it is yeah it's it's one of those things where that was something that was easy for me to delegate but not easy for me to sit down and like write it out so that was a good exercise for me i had to set set aside two three days to open up a Word document, to like go through my process, attach some videos of me screen recording what I'm doing. No one wants to do that. Yeah. That's awful. That's well, so, so boring. So how, do you, how have you learned? How have you learned? <laughs> so you yeah, just it's have terrible. To do it. Yeah, you yeah. have to do it yourself. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, people are like, oh, I want to be a YouTuber. It looks like so much fun. Oh, so I want to do it. Well, they so see the highlight easy. reel. Yeah, it's yeah. not. And so it's funny, even with dream jobs, guys, like, you still got to do stuff you don't want to do. Yeah. It's, I always talk about like, it's always the percentage. So if I can like, if 50 to 60% of my work life stays like, like fun, I feel yeah. like I'm doing something good. That's sick. You know, if 40% like grunt work, well, I think that's I, better than most people. <laughs> yeah. I, that's where what most people don't understand. They're like, Oh, you're, you're a CEO of a company. You get to travel the world. I'm like, yo, I eat shit like every day. <laughs> Like yeah. literally it's an acquired taste yeah, like, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and you yeah, just yeah. keep going like every single day, more and more of it keeps coming mm -hmm, through. Mm -hmm. I'll share this clip from the wire that you'll Ooh. die laughing. Oh yes. yeah. yeah I like, love it. Do you have like a, like a airplane routine yeah. where you got things on lock? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I basically wear, have it down. Yeah. yeah. I've got it. Yeah. Do I mean, I've got the eye, eye mask like here, yeah. water, drink lots of water. Mm. Water is critical. I don't drink on flights anymore. So it used to be when you first were going, Mimosa, it's like, woo, yeah. yeah, like let's let's have a couple. Yeah, and, you know, so, yeah I'll have another double, bring them <laughs> back, feeling pretty good. Yeah. You know, they'd be like, sleep. it's the worst sleep you can get. Yeah. One yeah. Uh, is kind of drunk sleep. And then the altitude, all you're doing is just destroying your body. Mm -hmm. And with uh, the quick turnarounds, that's not to say I haven't gone hungover onto a flight. <laughs> I just don't drink on the flight or you know, maybe still Water. partially yes. under the influence while going onto a flight, but, <laughs> you know, but I'm not continuing it on the flight. Yeah. yeah uh, so yeah. yeah, drinking, drinking tons of water. Uh, the other thing is time zones. So you have to adapt prior to getting on the flight to what the time zone is and the destination that you're going. And a lot of it is mental. So, mm. you know, you, everyone has the friends and now that you live in New York. So when you come to the West coast, I mean, this drives me up the wall. When. You come, you I know. love not if when, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so when you, so when you, you go, when you come to the West coast, you always hear the people from the East coast. It's like, well, it's, it's midnight in New York. It's like, M effort. Like you're, you're in Vegas. Like it's nine o'clock here. Like yeah. that's your reality. Nobody cares what's going, what time it is in New York. Right. But my point is, is it's a mindset. So you, you have to adapt your mindset and then also your sleeping pattern. So mm. 
if you're starting to land, you know, you, you want to hit the ground running as to, hey, it's the middle of the day, not I'm going to go take a nap. Like you have to push through mm -hmm. it. Those mm -hmm. sort of things where when you're traveling, uh, otherwise the time zones will just eat you alive. I just got back from South Korea and it oh, wrecked yeah. me <laughs> for five days. Yeah. No, I was not prepared. You. Yeah. Yeah. Not prepared. And that's where you have to prepare on the way there and then on the way back. And then there's a regimen around how much to sleep on your way back. So, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the flight and when you're, when you're landing back, let's say in New York mm -hmm. and you know, it's going to be nighttime when you land, but maybe it's sleep. five o'clock or yeah. six o'clock. It's too early to go to bed. You can't just sleep 10 hours on a flight because you'll never, you'll I never. I slept like, the yeah. entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I slept. Rookie, rookie move. Rookie I know, move, the rookie entire move. Okay. 15 hours <laughs> yeah. and it just, it wrecked me. Yeah, yeah. no, you're destroyed because now you're coming back, you're awake all night long and then, you know, that's still to the next day. New York for life. Everyone come yeah. see me. <laughs> Hey, you could do it, but you'd be yeah. very bored. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the concrete jungle will wear you down. You'll yeah. want to go elsewhere and travel. We'll see. We'll so see do how you, long Do you travel lasts. frequently? I do. I do. Yeah. Is um, it for work or is it fun? Mostly for work. Or is it yeah. Um, all for work, I would yeah. say. I mean, for the first time ever in like three weeks, I'm just going to go back to Texas for my mom's birthday, you know, just yeah. do some Chill just out. like chill, nice travel. But usually it's always for work. Um yeah, I'm just in the phase of life where I know probably in seven to 10 years, maybe I'll feel like I need to chill. But right now when I have no responsibilities in my life other than like yeah, just, just doing it, you know, might as well just go, go, go. So you, one of the things that, that fascinated me with, me with you and we were just discussing now is, you know, you went from Texas, you lived in, in Nashville, Nashville for a year, TNC. And, but it was the, the rationale behind Nashville. Mm -hmm. So you basically had a group of people you wanted to meet mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I give myself a year target. You're like six yeah. months into it. You did it, but there's a mindset around that planning and mm -hmm. it's exposing yourself to, to engage and kind of learn from others around you, mm -hmm. which. And it's always about the people. Like yeah. I, it, it started with uh, my friends. We would road trip to Nashville all the time. Cause we, I was really into music in high school and early in my college days. And so I was, I was in a band, but I also love, it's amazing. I'd never go to shows anymore. Like music is not a part of my life. So sad, but it used to be a huge part of my life. So Nashville really intrigued me because it was such a music city. And so we would road trip there from Texas all the time. So I already had friends in Nashville. I was like building connections and it just seemed like an easy step. Um, New York wasn't in my mind yet. I, it was in the back of my mind, but Nashville just seemed so much easier yeah, from yeah, like yeah. Dallas to Nashville instead yeah. of like Dallas to New York, <laughs> yeah. right? Culture and so, shock. Exactly. And so it was cool because, you know, I moved there and I would go to Franklin, downtown Franklin and see singer songwriters that I was big fans of just like walking around, you know, at the coffee shop, Frothy yeah. Monkey, shout out. And it was cool and I was reaching out to people and I was doing series and YouTube videos and I was, you know, connecting one dot with the other with people. And it was weird. I had like climbed the ladder that I wanted to climb. Right. And I was like, oh, okay, this is weird. Cause this is pretty much it. If you don't, cause I didn't want to make uh, music videos. Right. If you're a content creator in Nashville and you don't want to make country music videos, you hit that ceiling pretty soon. Right. And I was kind of like, well, okay, what's next? <laughs> well, how do you like, it, like, how do you know when that, that time comes and know when to kind of mm -hmm. pivot and do something yeah. else? I had a literal list of people okay. that I was like right. cross, so, crossing we're, we're off. Getting, yeah. All right. yeah. This is, yeah. It's like, it, it could be, it's a positive list. Yeah, not like a hit oh, list yeah, Oh yeah. Right? Not a hit yeah. list guys. It was, these people are dope. I want to meet them. I want to yeah. collaborate in some way. Haley Williams is still on that list. So girl, hit me up. Let's hang. <laughs> Haley. Haley, if you're out there listening to if this you're ever in New York. <laughs> yeah. She was it's the DG, one. Ride, ride I, I want to you know? join Paramore, please. Um, and so, yeah, it was one of those things where like I wanted, I, I collaborated, I made the videos, it was cool. And it, it, there was also this weird shift where like I didn't, music wasn't as big of a part of my life. I right. realized I'm not going to be Taylor Swift's guitar player. Like yeah. that's not going to happen, right? Yeah. Um, I've always been a gearhead. So when I was like more on guitar forums looking at gear and like buying stuff without actually playing it. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> um, and that's when I was really, really falling hard with videos. So yeah, it's just all, all the things aligned, right? Like the people, I was making cool videos with them. Um, but everyone has 
family there too. Right. <laughs> and it's like a very, um, a very family, cent- it, it's honestly just a more creative Dallas. Right. But it still feels like you're in the suburbs. It's still, it still f- like feels like you're somewhat trapped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. a little bit. Um, so yeah, everything kind of aligned to where I was like, okay, time to move on. So then to New York. So, yes. So then you're, was New York the destination that you had? Now it moved from the back of the head to yeah, the front of the I head. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy in high school, I, so I thought I was going to live in Texas for the rest of my life. I was like, I had a dope mom. I was like, okay, I'm going to be a dope mom to someone, yeah. you know, I'm going to like go to college, get married, have kids, be a stay at home mom. What's up? Life fence. is good. Yeah, White yeah, picket yeah. fence. I'm ready. Take me there. Um, mommy vlog, mommy like you're vlogger, have it, you're have it all. Come which probably at me, that's Walmart, good still, still, that yeah. still could happen. Like, totally it's not, not shutting the door on yeah. that. Um, so Target, Walmart <laughs> yeah, again, yeah. hit me up. Yeah. So it was one of those things where, like, something happened in college where I think electrical engineering just made me so crazy in the head that I was like, I have to find something creative to do. Yeah. And you know, that's really where I kind of had my like first aspirations of, oh my God, I want to build and like, I'm ready for this journey and I want to like hire people and like make money and like, let's do this. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was kind of a weird transition. Where, that I where went does through. that fire come from? Like, were you, were you just, know. are your parents very like, I, well, okay. Gung-ho, are you I, very supportive or like, where, where does it ton just, of like, support, come from? But so my parents are awesome. For the most part, they've always been supportive. Shout yeah. out to my dad who thought I was dumb for dropping out of college, but it wasn't his money. I was one who was going to go into debt. <laughs> so I'm fine. Look at me now. And you, you made but it. my mom was cool. Like yeah. she, she, we were always on the phone. She understood that like it was the right thing to do, but it, it took a moment to, to get to that point. But they were always pretty supportive. But the one thing that I'll always take as like a very good parenting, I think I was like parented very well. Right. Um, I always wanted stuff. Kids always want stuff, yeah. but it was always linked with work. So they're like, oh yeah, you want that guitar? Like they wouldn't buy me a guitar for my birthday. Yeah. I'm like, how rude, you Gosh, know? Like I, I had to go babysit yeah. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had to like beg them for lessons, you yeah. know? So there was always something associated with, if I wanted a guitar, if I wanted, um, you know, X, Y, Z, it was always associated with well, like, oh, well the, that go family, work. yeah. That family, the new family down the street, just, you know, they have kids, you could go babysit. And like, literally they would, they would always help me get you seem the like jobs. you'd be the coolest babysitter ever. Oh, I was a great way. babysitter. Yeah, that's why I wanted to be a mom as a profession. <laughs> yeah, 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 I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, just remember when fun. you're babysitting, you're giving them back. So it's like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so exactly. That's the best kind of. Yeah, yeah exactly. you get to play with cute kids for two hours, but you can give them back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was one of those things where like my mom would walk me down to the neighbor's house to help me like you know, I was in eighth grade and seventh grade and like helped me talk to the neighbor to secure the job, secure the babysitting job. Um, so they would help me get the opportunities. But yeah, it was always like babysitting. And, I, you know, I played basketball all throughout my uh, elementary school, middle school, high school. So I was like refereeing sixth grade girls basketball when I was in sixth grade. And I they couldn't even legally pay me, but I was getting like volunteer hours. Uh, yeah. But then once like the 10 volunteer hours passed. Um, I just like hung out there cause I knew I could get paid the next year. So it was always just like odd jobs like that. I would give guitar lessons. Um, so I think that that early association with like, you want something and just like go find a job to do, yeah. you know, uh, really helped. And so it's yeah. roll up your sleeves. Yeah. Put in the, put in the work for yeah. what you want. And there's no like fear attached with like the, there was no like, Oh, I can't go talk to them. I like, well, what do, what, them well, how do job, you, how do you, you know? yeah, but how do you, how do you, I think, that, I think that I feel the same way as mm-hmm. you, first of all, I don't have a fear of going to talk to people. Yeah. You know, we were at a, a NASCAR event and we're sitting there and then we started yeah. chatting with Kyle Bush. Like you're sitting there and they're like, well, you just went and spoke to him. Like, well, yeah. what is he going to do? Beat me up? I yeah. mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. But how do you, how do you, how do you approach that? Because a lot mm-hmm. of people are not that way and they have a yeah. fear of just failure. You know, when you look, even moving to Nashville or mm-hmm. Nashville to New York, I mean, there's a certain psyche you have to have. And I'm sure you had like doubts, like, oh, totally, am yeah. I going to, am I going to totally screw up here? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be I never you know, went, homeless in, in, yeah, in New yeah, York. Yeah. I know? never went cold Turkey. Yeah. So 
it was one of those things where when I was living in Nashville, I was randomly getting like jobs in New York. So I would have people paying me to go and visit New York. Right. You know, I was like, um, you know, I do this uh, event recap for like a thousand dollars with Adobe. And but was that deliberate? Like you'd seek out jobs in New York, so yeah. like dip Honestly, your toe in the water, and it just a happened. A little bit. Okay. A little bit. Um, and I always knew, so my senior year of high school, going back to like, oh, I just wanted to be a mom. My grandma and my mom bought me a trip to New York for my graduation present. And when I went to New York, you know, as an 18 year old, 18 year old girl who only thought Texas was the only thing that ever existed. <laughs> I was looking at these buildings. I was like, what, what is, is this? It is larger than a lot of countries. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. It takes eight Tejas hours to just original. get her. Yeah. Um, and then I, I had no idea there was anything like this, like the buildings and the hustle and bustle and the people. So it wasn't until, yeah, my senior year of high school was always in the back of my mind, like, wow, this is sick. And and after that, I did do a lot of traveling because it was this weird reckoning of there's a world outside yeah. of Texas, yeah. what? And so, you know, I would go to crazy places like Greece and Iceland and all this stuff. So travel played a really big part um, when I was in college. And it it was a great thing to, to have then and kind of like, I don't want to say get out of my system because traveling can be, you know, like a lifestyle and a good right. thing to always do. But I wouldn't it, know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You're like the king of it. Um, but it was one of those things that I'm glad I did because I'm not sitting here in New York hustling, wondering what Greece looks like. Like, But do you do you think that like, really when it. you look at travel and <laughs> yeah. exposing yourself, yeah. Nashville, New York, you mentioned Iceland, Greece. Mm -hmm. Did you learn more there than you did in college? I learned you know, that I want to- life? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know it was funny. People are going to hate me for saying this because Iceland is sick, right? Iceland is like cool. Yeah. But that's where I realized that I don't care about like scenery. Yeah. I, literally the- It's like the, me with churches. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like the fourth day in Iceland, I was like, oh my God, a 10 day trip here is like way too long. Yeah. I was like, I'm so cold. <laughs> I'm like, there's only so many mountains I can shoot. Yeah, yeah, How do I yeah. make this place look exciting? Yeah. Um and I don't know, I just, I feed off of the energy, even though I don't hang out with a lot of people, <laughs> I like almost being alone with people. Like yeah. in New York, you feel the, you know, yeah. people's energy and just proximity. Buildings. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. And I the love energy. buildings. So those places where, is where I like gain the self-awareness of like, oh, I need to be in a city. Right. That's really what makes right. me feel alive. I'm like, this is the first and last time that I'm coming to Iceland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you went, tick the box. But I went, I ticked the box. I have the dope pictures. But I yeah. just tweeted about them today. They're like sliding back into a recession because uh, really, yeah, yeah. There's no one wants to go anywhere. Well, no, because what ends up happening, you know, with all the all these destinations mm -hmm. and even these hotels, et cetera. So when the the boom is coming and it's you know the new hot spot, the hotels and everyone char the Over airlines invest. charge they charge more and more and more and more and more, and then they forget the partners that they worked with that maybe sell the mm -hmm. destination. And they kind of kick them to the curb and say, well, we don't need you anymore because we're Iceland or we're the hot right. new area. And then all of a sudden it becomes cost prohibitive. You know, it hits that arc, like what mm. goes up must come down. And then they start a downward slope because people are like, it's too effing expensive to go there. I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Or and then something it's not else as glamorous. Becomes a new exactly. exactly. Like then it's Thailand or here, mm -hmm. or Vietnam or Bali oh, yeah. or we whatever. We already ruined the here. beaches in Thailand. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> that's yeah. already done. It's already done. Next, what else are we exactly. going to do? But that's what, that's what ends up happening. And yeah. so then it, it ebbs and flows and goes that's up interesting. and down. What's the next Iceland? Uh, I mean, I if like you, you look, should know that. Yeah, Asia's 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 just exploding right, right yeah. now. Especially South like Korea was Vietnam, cool. other mm. areas like that. Laos, like, very cool. Those are the new hot spots that are coming. Oh, for sure. Yeah, uh, I just went to Busan. I I didn't. Busan. We didn't even go to Seoul, but my boyfriend's fr family, extended family, is from Busan. Um, it was so beautiful. Yeah, oh my South Korea is cool. It's definitely an I, underrated. I place didn't know go. it's seventy percent mountains. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. It was beautiful. Where, so you went, you went to Greece, you said? Yeah. So my college years were full of so many. I had, this is some good advice. If you're in college, later in high school, just find a buddy to go and just travel with. Because yeah. I, I really, those were some really fun times. And I like learned a lot about myself. I just had a friend, shout out to Chelsea. Yeah. She's probably not listening either, but <laughs> shout out to Chelsea. She was my, when uh, she does. If and when, <laughs> when she, she does. does. When yeah. she does. We've got to assume positive. Exactly. Yeah. When she does. Chelsea and Haley Williams. Um, so I, 
she wanted to travel too. So she was my travel buddy. And we would sit down and be like, all right, where do, where do we want to go next? So we went to Greece. We went, we, we would go to Nashville all the time because we had friends in Nashville. Uh, we would watch Secret Life of Walter Mitty and be like, yeah. oh my God, let's go to Iceland. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we really, we went to Iceland after we watched Secret Life of Walter Mitty because they made it look so epic. And it, it is epic. Um, and yeah, you know, I went to like France and Italy and um, Austria. Austria yeah. was my yeah, yeah. favorite place in Europe. I yeah, mean, I I went to Innsbruck. I was like above the clouds in my hotel. I was like, what is this? It was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Poland's another destination where people Ooh, are starting to go. Okay. Yeah. Poland. It's, yeah. It's different, different, different areas. Yeah. So you, so the travel component, just going back to that mm-hmm. and close the loop on it. So essentially you, you've learned a lot about yourself. So mm-hmm. one that you didn't want to be in remote locations. <laughs> Uh, two, yeah. you wanted to be in a major city. Like yeah. what, what else, what else did travel sort of yeah. teach you or that you learned about yourself? There's so many different people in this world besides just like middle America people. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. it's like, I don't know how to delicately say this, but like I grew up in like the biggest bubble ever. And it was like only one type of person, right? It's like, the question is like, not do you go to church, but like what church you go to, yeah. you know? And it's like, um, luckily being in the Dallas area, I did, it was like pretty diverse, which was cool, um, but nothing like New York. And yeah. um, I think that's one thing that travel just everywhere uh, gave to me is just like empathy for other people, yeah. like understanding how different people live and like, oh man, like, just how everything, you know, whether it's like politics, religion, anything like serious in life, I think, um, I think it can be a more, I don't know, like a more powerful thing or a more, you just like empathy, right? Yeah. I think that's the the underlying uh, theme of Well, you understand where that, because every, the yeah. media kind of paints a picture about whatever yeah. they want. And then there's the reality. And the thing that I've mm-hmm. found is that there's people just like you and I Mm-hmm. all over the world. Like there's somebody in India who's like me and thinks like me. There's somebody like me in South Korea or mm-hmm. you and vice versa. We just speak different languages. Exactly. Like they have the same thought process. Yeah. They like all the same things or, you know, types mm-hmm. of things. They have it is weird too. Friends. When you travel, I had this weird, there has to be like a word for this. You know, like when you realize that every single person has like as complex of a weird life as you do. Yeah. And like yeah, they yeah. have as many friends and family members and like, crazy crap that they have going yeah, on in your yeah. life well, there's everyone this, has the crazy aunt or yeah uncle or exactly there's this weird thing when i went to south korea and we were like at a park and like everyone was just walking walking around and i was like this is so weird that you know you're on like the opposite there's there's these people on the opposite time schedule when you go to bed they wake up and like yeah. they just live their own life yeah. but, i don't know it was, do they that eat, so they dumb, eat food too? But like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's weird when you realize that like, oh, when you yeah. go to bed, there's an entire other world half that's of the living world their life. They're living awake. their life. Yeah, 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 it's exactly. so crazy. Yeah. So Man. stay up all night. Yeah. You shouldn't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> Somebody's the lesson. Yeah, exactly. Don't sleep. Hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> hustle, 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 hustle. <laughs> all day long. No <laughs> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Duh. so now, you know, one of the interesting videos that you had was around brand building. You're like, yeah. When, what was it like 2016 or something Ooh, when you were creating the your new brand-a-thon? brand? Yeah, the brandathon yeah. that yeah. you had. Those videos are fun. Yeah. So now it was actually pretty funny. <laughs> 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 Photographers and all okay. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good video. <laughs> they did. Yeah, it was a good one. But they, uh, so when you look at in today's environment, it's totally different than back when you started, mm-hmm. even back when you ran, when you did the brandathon to now. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know that a lot of people are aspiring to build their own brand. Yeah. You know, what are, what are some tips given the changing environment, the oversaturation, mm. uh, a lot of, you know, crappy do content. Do something that's like have a thing that you do, not yeah. just like have a brand, like yeah. all these, <laughs> I don't understand. I'll have like a new person on my feet every week. That's like, that's like just this thing as an entrepreneur, but I'm like, okay, what is the business that you're building them. Well, like what is, what is your thing <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you you know travel obviously you do more than just run an instagram page yeah. right so i would say one like have a thing like even if i wasn't a youtuber i lost all my followers i could go to an ad agency and like make really dope uh not movies but like uh, documentary stuff like right. i am confident in my storytelling skills i am confident in uh, you know premiere with editing and but have telling. you always been that confident or has it been by trial and error um, i mean it, like when actually, you look yes. at yourself yes yeah there was a moment where obviously it was years and years in high school of 
like struggling through the video editing program, figuring out how to do things. But um, after a few years of doing that and uh, kind of like doing certain projects after maybe four years. So that's still, I look at that as a short amount of time because yeah, yeah, I, I was yeah. in like high school and I was doing other stuff. Um, but after four years of doing the video thing, I was like, this is my thing. Like I can tell a story. Right. And so once you kind of find your thing and like you can charge confidently in the night and do your thing, I think that's when maybe the question should start of like, oh, how do I build a personal brand to leverage my skill? That thing, whatever right? the, skills, yeah. the skill that you have. Is. And so it's like, if you're sitting around like, watching entrepreneurs on Instagram thinking how you can be them like that's not it no I mean I think yeah. everybody has to it, find Chief. their own thing it's yeah. you know who are you what do you do yeah. what's your sort of authentic voice mm -hmm. and everybody you know may not be pro basketball player yeah. you, know, yeah. or, oh, you know you know but it's not yeah. it's not feasible but you have you clearly have other talents and yeah. it's just tapping into those talents yeah. and then and doing stuff I mean I can't tell you how many times it, it's funny, the, the funniest thing my mom, the funniest conversation I've ever had with my mom is we're sitting down and we're talking about failure or something. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, you know, it's funny. I've like never failed in my life. You know, I just like keep on going to the next thing. And she goes, Sarah, what are you talking about? She's like, you failed so many times. Remember when you wanted to be like a professional basketball player and you went to high school and realized you weren't the best point guard anymore? And I had to pick you up at that basketball camp that made you cry like sophomore yeah. year of high school. Yeah. yeah, so you failed at that. And remember when you wanted to be like a famous guitar player and like that didn't work <laughs> out? Your yeah, mom's you like failed. documented. <laughs> Maybe she but has I a vlog. Like, <laughs> All of Sarah's failures. <laughs> but I guess the point is like you have to be in a, in a so laser focused on what you want to where they don't even seem like failures, you yeah. know? Cause to me, I'm just like, Oh, I'm just moving on with my life and I'm exploring my interest. And like, if one thing doesn't work out, I move on to the next, you know? So in my brain, I'm like, what is failure? It just means you pivot, you know, Ross from friends pivot. Yeah. That's all that means. And so it's like, you're not, if you love basketball, and you don't become an NBA player, yeah. that's okay. You move pivot. on to the yeah, next. Pivot, you pivot, pivot to the next thing. You know? Or you can do something that's tied to basketball. Exactly. You can be a basketball content commentator. Exactly. You can have a podcast. You know, there's so many cool ways to create the content nowadays. Well, so. I think that a lot of people, one of the challenges that they have is they hang on to these failures as mm. though they're just like a scarlet letter. You know, yeah, and it's like I'm that. wearing it for the rest of my life. It's kind yeah. of, you know, you got to just move on. Like mm -hmm. I failed. Yeah, it didn't work. Own it. Yeah. Main thing I always say is learn from it. So totally. you don't do the same thing. Like if you're totally. trying to circle back, trying to be a basketball player again, mm. you know, it might be problematic. Yeah. I learned that I'm cardio is what tripped me up. Uh, I was, I was the point guard who was always like behind the center on the suicides. That's not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I was like, okay, well I hate running. So next, next guitar. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so to, with your mom in that conversation, mm -hmm. obviously now they must be pretty proud of oh, everything definitely. that you've done. Yeah. And you know, how do you, how does it work when you go back to Texas now? Like, like you're, yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's weird. I feel like uh, I never, I've never been like hard on myself or feel like I'm uh, trying like comparing with other people has never been a thing with me. But I've, I've learned now that I have this weird thing. And I think everyone has a weird thing with their parents where they have to constantly prove that they're like doing okay. Right. Or like, like, see, be proud of me. Yeah. And I know they're proud of me and they like yeah. voice it all the time. They're great parents. But like, there's this weird thing where I feel like I'm like constantly trying to prove myself yeah. to them, yeah. which is like, I'm still trying to untangle that web. Um, but yeah, it's like very chill, but I find myself always just like being like, so I got this the other day, I like really cool brand opportunity. How do you feel about that? And they're paying me this much have you money. Heard of Adobe? And yeah. <laughs> and it's like one of these weird things where like, they're like, oh, cool, Sarah, yeah. sick. Like, <laughs> proud of you. Um, yeah, it's one of those weird things where I think it's like, uh, you're constantly trying to prove yourself to your parents, but then realizing that like, they're just adults too. And like, you, you guys can just be adults together and have fun in life. And like, there's not this weird pressure that, that you feel, I feel like from age one to 18, yeah. you know, you can just like, yeah. The whole 
parent kid thing is weird yeah, after yeah, after like you move weird, out. Oh yeah, yeah. weird dynamic. Well, you come back, yeah. it's like you can't tell me what to do. And yeah, it's kind of right? like, but they're like, well, you're under my roof. Yeah, it's but like, you well, still but. you still value their opinion. Yeah, of and course. So, of yeah, you like, course. yeah, it's so funny. I shot him like a picture of this painting, and like my mom was instantly like, oh, interesting, <laughs> and I was like. What does that mean, yeah, does that Genie? Mean? Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> and then you and then you think about that for the next like week, and it like wrecks you. And then you're like, why? But yeah. why though? They're just another <laughs> adult, like you know. Yeah, yeah. I Are could you, have a whole. No- I could do a podcast dedicated to like parents. I feel like that would be an interesting <laughs> podcast. Produce that, guys. Well, what would be your takeaway from parents? My takeaway would, oh god. Eh? I would, yeah, I mean, I would take. With parents, you learn what what to do and what not to do, yeah. right? And so with parents, I feel like the takeaway is like with kids, at least, I, I take it all into like parenting for like right. when, you know, whenever I'm a parent, I feel like the good thing is like, yeah, if a kid wants something, like associate it with work, like go make them do something right. to get it. Like don't yeah. just give them 20 bucks of allowance. What is that? Yeah. Unless they're doing dishes or something. I didn't do the dishes. That's something I'm going to make my kids do that my mom didn't make me do is like chores. Do you know how to cook? I don't. Okay. So Thank God I live in New York with Seamless. <laughs> I literally get food delivered every single day. What's your go-to? What's your go-to in New York? Um, A good pad thai. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a place in I, town? I don't. I just go on Seamless and I, I click the one with the most stars. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, I'm a very <laughs> simple rating. human. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I need food to come to me okay. so I can continue working. Yeah. There you go. So, so yeah. do you work every single day? Do you take time for yourself or do you ever yeah. get burned out? You know, uh, I don't get burned out as much. Just, well, yes, I spiral. Yeah. I, I will say one <laughs> thing with like the life of a YouTuber is the highs are highs and the lows are low. Yeah. Well, I think it's like entrepreneurship. I think in probably entrepreneurship yeah. in general. Um, Cause there's this weird thing where everyone has an opinion on you, uh-huh. which is interesting. Imagine that. Yeah. And you know, and it's really weird if like other creators start having opinions on you too. So that was my most recent spiral thinking, Oh my God, could another creator like think I'm a fraud? Did something happen? Or, yeah. 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 Like, it, what, what was always it? things are happening. Yeah. Always just things are happening. And it's so funny because my drama is literally like, are you on a Mac or a PC? Like that's my <laughs> drama. Okay. It's like, like it's not, yeah. it's not like, Oh my God, they broke up with this person. It's, it's like drama that doesn't matter, right. but it still affects you when it's your job, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, it's one of those things where it's just, I, what was the question? What are we talking about? Well, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> like, I started thinking about like, oh my, I started thinking about a video I need to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's What's the video you're going to make? Yeah, I, yeah, need to, just constantly, I need the to, the piece of content yeah, just went into exactly. your head. You need to make another yeah, MacBook exactly, video. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, travel, no travel, just kind of in the, is it where, where, what's next on your list or what's on your bucket list from a mm. travel standpoint? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> Truthfully, bucket list is to stay in New York a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms of traveling, staycation. yeah, staycation vibes. I would love to explore Asia more. I mean, I loved South Korea. It was so cool. I was really bummed I didn't get to go to Japan. Yeah, um, Tokyo. And then amazing, yeah, I want to go to Tokyo. Yeah. I want to hit some of the big uh, China cities. Like, What's crazy is you can go eight levels below, like in, within the subway system, and still have Wi-Fi. Like well, that's a place where the Wi-Fi actually. Why? Does work. I'm telling you, New York is so behind on so many. I think things. it's the U.S. infrastructure around. Yeah, all that what is stuff. that? Like, I will say, when I went to South Korea, every single like we stayed in like a really janky hotel one night. It was like thirty dollars a night. But the Wi-Fi was amazing yeah. <laughs> and it was free. Yeah. So, and then we went to like public, uh, like public coffee shops. Oh and yeah, like, everybody. It's like the whole city is connected. You know, it's, it's crazy. Why yeah. do I, we not? It, baffle, I, it baffles me here how we're yet to be able to And we're like the land of that. Silicon Valley and you're, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. come on guys. So Hong Kong and Beijing and like, you know, China cities. I would love to go there too. Okay. Cause like all amazing places. Yeah. All. And so I was bummed cause you know, I went all the way to South Korea and I went to Taipei, Taiwan too. That was okay, awesome. Yeah. And once you're there, you feel like you just need to hit all the places, but yeah, I just but didn't need, have enough you time. You need more time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So when you vacation or you go on trips, are you documenting that oh, as well? Definitely. Creating content? I don't really you? go. Yeah. 
I haven't had like a proper vacation in a while, probably South Korea, but I was only in South Korea for like three days. Okay. Um, so that was really short. I need to do like a proper week of just like exploring because yeah, I haven't done that. So yeah. yeah, shut it all down. Yeah. Because you always feel the need to document, right? So gadgets, you, you yes. obviously review gadgets. gadgets. You look mm -hmm. at gadgets. I'm a gadget guy yeah. as well. What are What's some of the coolest stuff that's out or coming out? Oh man, I am so tunneled vision on boring stuff right now. That widescreen monitor like, oh, though is yeah, pretty yeah, legit. Yeah. Yeah, I, that, will I will say my say content that. has really shifted towards computer content for yeah. some reason. It's just something that I always say with uh, my YouTube channel is, all right, maybe I need to start saying it more so people stop leaving comments. I'm a biased tech reviewer because yeah. I only want to talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah. And you're coming to my channel for my opinion, right? Yeah. So it's like, I really respect people like MKBHD and Marquez. Like I would call them like a very... Um, unbiased phone reviewer because they get every single model they use it they you know but like I just that's not interesting to me so yeah. I'm always doing kind of like exploring only what I'm interested in the moment hopefully well, it seems, seems to be working so yeah it's okay. yeah yeah so <laughs> if you want to know about laptops <laughs> what's you the can. best laptop right <laughs> the now? best laptop not the MacBook Pro okay <laughs> I'll just say that yeah I I've been personally burned by my MacBook of just like not working so that's been fun to explore but yeah, my biggest takeaway, I will say, with, with that whole state of things, is if you don't travel, just get a desktop computer. If you like Mac OS more, get an iMac. If you are like PC master race, build a cheap tower. Like laptops don't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter or if you're like- iPads as, la yeah, as laptops. Yeah, like I, it's iPads, like, trying to be computers, just get a desktop. It'll whack. be cheaper and it'll work all the time. Well, Sarah, thank That's you so much. Yeah, yeah, it'll be I'm cheaper and it'll work all the yeah, time. Yeah, but I'm going to leave everyone with. Go with a desktop. Please subscribe. With a widescreen monitor. Listen to my podcast, That Creative Life. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. So fascinating to hear your story, what you're doing. Yeah. Congrats on all your success. Thanks for you're, having so, me. And uh, keep pushing out that content, even if it's just the gadget you like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you.